Good evening and welcome to fiscal year 2023 budget discussion meetings. This is the Ways and Means Committee of the Greenfield City Council. It is Wednesday, April 27th, 2022, and it is 6.02 p.m. I'd like to call this meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded and videotaped by the Ways and Means Committee and GCTV 15. If any of the persons present are doing the same, you must notify the chairperson at this time. Okay, there is uh, no one notifying me. We'll do a roll call. Councillor Jarvis? Here. Councillor Healy? Here. Councillor Taranzo? Right here. And Councillor DeSorga? I see you, Councillor DeSorga. I think she's saying she can't hear you. Ginny, can you hear me? You can't hear me. <laughs> it's her phone or your phone, Chris. <laughs> yes. I thought it was just Liz getting here. <laughs> yeah. Grand entrance. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let me see. Hang on. Now it's working better. Oh, Good. I Thank see you. you. I hear you. I'm going to call roll. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh wait a minute that was me i i pushed the facetime by mistake okay all yeah. right so councillor de sorga well i'm here good and councillor forgy we have a full compliment this evening um we have no minutes to approve we have no public hearing we have no motions to take up but we do have budget discussion this evening we are going to take up where we left off at our meeting on um, today's there on Tuesday, um, and we're going to continue with um, our budget discussion on the DPW um, operating budget for fiscal year 2023. The only uh, piece we really need to ascertain at this point is where do we want to start on this. Um, I think we've done a number of, uh, I think we've done some hard work on this budget already. Um, is there any uh, questions or concerns or comments that need to go uh, to the DPW director regarding the administrative budgets? Chris, if I may, sure. for one second. Mm -hmm. Jimmy, on the top of your of your tab of your tablet, you'll see the the um, volume sign. See if you hit the volume up up button. It's the second from the last on the top. Can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you fine. We can hear you. Okay. So, Great. so, um, Councilor Jarvis, should I push anything else? No, nope, no, nope, you should be okay. fine. Th thank you. I'm sorry for my technical. No, you're good. No, that's okay. Um, anybody have any questions for Director Warner? on the general operating budget. Councilor DeSorga? So I I know that we left kind of in the middle. We it, To yes, me, it we seems did. like we jumped around a little bit. And so I, you know, kind of reserved the whatever to go back. So I, I'm, I am going to jump around a little bit because it was one thing that people asked about um, the other night that I just wanted to go back to that I didn't quite understand why that was important. So um, you asked about um, the snow and ice budget. And, yes. and Marlo happily reported. Now, what page is a, um, let me just look. I'm 139. 139. Okay. So you asked about that. You asked about what was left. And what was that figure again? We didn't use that that much. Um, Oh. Director Warner, have um, your handy. I, I have to take a quick peek at my at my email, but I think I sent it to you. Was did you ask the question? Yes. I believe it's yes, I did. Three thousand and some change, if I'm remembering correctly, from the other morning or the we other spent, night. No, hang on, we I'm spent how much? 
Let me just see. Um, the current balance for fiscal year 22 snow and ice is $47,933.75. And that was from an operating budget of $217,800. So, so my question on that was, because I, I thought about it afterwards, what it, it seems like something different happens to that in the budgeting process. Do we put that back in? Do we put, do we take that full amount and ask for it next year or subtract it? Okay, I'm going to um, ask Liz if she would explain it. It's the only a line item that can be overexpended in our operating budget. Right. If Correct. it goes into, if we get a huge, you know, 20,000 feet of snow, um, and we have to, and Marlo's laughing because that's his nightmare. But if we overexpend, and we can, and we're allowed to, um, then what the difference is between the budgeted and what we overexpended has to be raised next year on the tax sheet. So that's the only line item that we can over legally overexpend. Yeah. Now, and now I'm going to turn over to Liz. <laughs> That's okay. Go um, ahead. And to, to keep that ability at the same level, you have to budget the same each year. Correct. So that, that is, okay. I think, where the confusion is coming in. You never, you never want to, Jenny, you never want to cut it less than it was the prior year. Oh, no, I, that wouldn't make any sense to me at all, because I know that we're not in charge of the weather. Um, yeah. what, what I wanted to know was, here it is, um, well, it's, it's almost May. If you have that, this is for Liz, actually. Um, so if you have that left over, why do we budget the same amount? Because you cannot carry general fund. Because you got to put it right into money the forward to close this to free cash. Very good. Okay. All right. So, so now I'm going to, I just, there was a piece of that that I thought, I think people knew something about that, that, that I didn't quite understand. So these are on all of the general operating budgets that we're talking now on the parks department. Yes. Um, there's a total, how many people in the parks department? It looks to me, and thank you. That chart was extraordinarily helpful. So it looks like in the parks department, we have, um, uh, total of one, two, three, four, five. Um, but there's a couple of people short. How is that? Is that right? We're budgeting for five people in the parks department. About that's cor that's correct. We now have we have two openings at this point in time, with the exception of a few out with other issues. Okay. So, and this would be the one. This would be the time when you needed probably that the most. Would would that be fair to say? Uh, very fair. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, last last year, and I don't know if I should get into this yet, or we're going into the the, the two um, the two enterprise funds. But last year we looked. We we did this water study. We uh, allotted money twenty five thousand dollars for a study on our water rates. Could could you tell us how that was in progress now? Like how we're doing on those water rates? Sure. We got um, we got a little held up because we get caught between budget cycles. The, mm -hmm. the, the way that that uh, rate study works is is you have to have kind of a, a, a in the moment uh, capital in the moment budget. Um, union contracts, everything that plays into the water and sewer budgets for um, the operating budgets and borrowing, so on and so forth. So we're moving along with it. I just submitted the the um, the capital that was approved last, uh, well, the 20th, so could, because that's a known. So they got to add that into their formulas and their spreadsheets. Um, so once we get through the, the budget I guess the annual budget will we'll know solid numbers on the current budget. And then I also submitted to them my updated five-year capital. So it's in progress. We hope to have it done by June 30th. Um, mm -hmm. as, as, as you recall, half of it came out of an operating and the other half came out of a, 
part of a, a multi-project capital. Uh, okay. Um, can I follow up on that? Yeah, sure. Go right well, ahead. So I'm looking at the 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 projects. We have a lot of projects that are going to be coming um, in this department. The I and I. There's we didn't do one of the the tr the trucks, et cetera. And this, I guess, would be for Liz. Is from what I I read on the laws on this, are we are we trying to budget within the enterprise fund for not just um, like maybe trucks that we needed, but for work that we know that's going to be done every year in that fund? So we are trying to borrow. Yes, for, generally we have that hundred thousand and two hundred thousand that's done every year. It's done every single year. We need it. We feel it's more something that should be budgeted for. Um, we made an attempt with that this year with the water, doing 100 in capital and 100 right in the budget. So the rates, either way, the rates need to support any debt service you take out for any borrowings that are authorized. And they also need, because the each enterprise fund pays the debt right. and the rates have to also cover what is budgeted within in there. So ultimately we're trying to get to a point where we're borrowing less right. for water and sewer. So that the funds are actually supporting, because we have a lot of infrastructure needs. So that the funds right. are right. supporting then, whatever. I'm sorry. No, go, you go. You okay, go. so that's one of the reasons we had the rate study was mm -hmm. this is more long-term. They're going to analyze all our long-term infrastructure needs in water and sewer. And they're going to say what the rates need to be to support that through the years. You know, it's better to be building up to it than all of a sudden have $20 million that needs to be done. Um, so that that's the goal of that study to make sure we're um, charging enough um, for that longer range picture. Yep. Marlo, you can add to that if you want, but I'm I'm trying to. Yeah, the the the, the rate study is going to take everything into consideration, and then there's formulas in the spreadsheets uh, on this um, assessment that it forecasts out up to 10 years or projects what we think the rates, um, the rate should be in order to um, um, calculate out what, what they should be going forward. Now, um, in, in a snapshot of time right now, the consultant firms, and, and of course we know what's coming down the pike on, on regulatory items, you know, every year, there's a regulation that comes out for testing of a certain compound in our drinking water, or, you know, an example is PFAs, PFOs. Uh, it's also affecting wastewater. So the study tries to project out other large capital projects that we, we may see coming down the pike, and, and, and the, the, the rate study is adjusted to that also. Um, I don't want to overspeak to it, but there's a lot to it. Um, it also calculates in potential uh, potential um, salaries and everything at a certain percentage going forward so that we have a pretty good idea of what we're looking at forecasting almost 10 years out. Yeah. Okay. Can I, um, just for a moment, um, Councillor Sorger, if I may, um, I want to, before we get into our enterprise funds at this point, I'd just like to know if everybody is satisfied with the information they've received from Director Warner in regard to the and and you can, and reserve the right nothing's written in stone in regard to the administrative part of the budget and also the central maintenance part of the budget which is what we reviewed the other evening. If we're comfortable with that then yes let's move right along to the enterprise funds. If not then if there are questions I think we need to kind of keep track of that first. Okay. It really does jump around. That, that sounds fine. You can, again, you can always go back and ask questions, but um, 
All right, we are technically now on the sewer enterprise fund. So, Councilor Sorga, thank you for leading us into that. And um, Fowler, do you want to talk to us about water and sewer? Yes. Um, well, sewer is the big one. I'd like to start with that. Um, okay. And, and as I presented the other two budgets, um, I'm trying to hit the highlights of the major increases and potential decreases. So please, um, I, I think I hit pretty pretty hard on on solid waste, which includes sludge sludge um, removal or disposal uh, that goes along with the trash that I talked about the other night. So we sludge has taken a major turn. Uh, I hate to say it this way, but for the worst, I. I was given some figures back in October, November of what we suspected they would be. And I believe it was somewhere around a hundred thousand dollar increase for this coming budget year. Uh, but since then I've received that it could be closer to 200 uh, because of the, the, the fuel in, you know, increase of trucking it um, and the uh, obvious electricity, so on and so forth of the plant we take it to. They, they're incurring increases also. So I, I think the major, the major thing to uh, take a look at in the in the sewer budget is the increase in sludge. I, I think it's going to be short as presented to you, but I had no control over those figures till after budgets closed. Um, I might want to add to that that one of the main priorities as we get into construction season and we get our, these other capital programs going, um, we are working on a dewatering. Um, and drying project for our sludge, which will essentially eliminate about 95% of the water out of our sludge. Because now, out of our 9,000 gallon loads, we are paying for about 95% of water that we're shipping out in order for the sludge to be um, processed at, in Lowell. So, um, we're working on a project. I have I have already some good figures on it. I just, we need to find the time to move it forward. Our largest increase are gonna start in September. So it's my intent to work throughout the summer to get potentially a uh, press, what we call a press installed to press the water out of our sludge, um, which will be a significant savings. Um, so we're, we're trying to correct this major increase on the fly, which was um, kind of already out of control, so. Um, is that um, going to take um, a capital expense of any kind? So yes, the the <clears throat> the intent is the um, we we put the uh, digester on hold back in uh, May or correct me if I'm wrong, probably March of 20, uh, February March of 20, because the figures weren't working out. We had hired an OPM. Uh, there was a lot of different things to swim through. Whether we were it would be Greenfield only or inter intermunicipal bringing in other, other um, communities sludge. Um, either way, when we got involved with the OPM and we started going through the drill, um, the, the original studies weren't accurate at all, to be quite frank. Um, they were almost double to put, put our digester in. So uh, at that point, I started going in another direction on this. How can Greenfield take care of themselves because um, we do produce a great deal of sludge. Uh, so thus in comes the, the press and, and dryer project. So um, I'm not sure if we're gonna go right to a dryer. Uh, this is a long-winded answer to your question, but the, the final response is the intent is to, is to uh, rescind the original digester 4 million and go for another financial order for what I need to go in this other direction. Okay. Thank you. Um, would you care to comment at all about the um, price of uh, fuel, fuel, heating, um, utility prices? Because I see it's basically level funded, but we all know from where we're sitting that we're feeling the personal pinch and the increase. So. Do you have a projection uh, in regard to your energy costs? Yeah, I would say that I, I level funded a lot of things. Some things increased. Uh, as a matter of fact, in sewer, it went down with the electricity at the wastewater treatment plant. Yes, it did. 
but okay. that's the uh, the payback from the Millbrook well field that Claire spoke to. Uh, okay. That's where the credits are going. So there's some savings there. Now, as far as fuel, heating, so on and so forth, gosh, I wish I had a crystal ball for the for, for all the departments of what we would be paying. But um, as we all know, it kind of fell apart about a month after budgets closed or it started falling apart. Mm -hmm. um, I looked two, three weeks ago and we're somewhere around the 30% range more at the pump on average than we were a year ago. 25 to 30%. It's fluctuating four or five cents a day. It's all over the place, but um, to nail down a perfect number, it changes the next day. So um, I, I, I'm assuming that I'm going to be in the same position as, as uh, uh, Chief Sprayhan. I, I may even be worse because everything we do requires a large diesel truck or gasoline in the DPW. You know, I, I actually joked in, in, um, in uh, capital and said, you know, Carol needs to find me an electric rubbish truck or a dump truck. Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's there's a lot of truth to that. It sounds funny, but um, we have no choice. Um, I have put additional memos out to my my staff. Pay real close attention to the 10 minute uh, law of filling. Uh, we're trying to double up as much as we can in trucks to to uh, conserve. Um, so the crystal ball, it's a great question. I wish I could answer that, but um, you know, I would say at this point in time, uh, a few of the budgets are, are gonna be short, um, no doubt. Um, I'm, I'm guessing the transfer station fuel budget at 66,000 with four trucks going everyday diesel trucks, uh, it's probably gonna be short, but I always, I always budget a little extra, as I had said, I think the other night that I need to budget in for emergencies. If we got to go four or five days running trucks steady, you know, any kind of um, flooding, so on and so forth. It, it, there's always been a little cushion there. So um, I hope that answers your question. I, I I wish I had that crystal ball. I I think it I think it's good for the public to hear um, how our budgets are affected. Um, the same way their household budgets are affected as well. You know, as well. I think it makes sense. Um, I, if, is there anybody, um, is it anybody that has, anybody on Ways and Means has a question for Director Warner so far? I, I do not. Councilor Jasorga, go ahead. Um, um, Milo, what, that, the press, the cost of the, do you have any idea what the ballpark of what a press would cost? I believe all installed in, in, in what's going on, the projection right now, um, I will get you the exact number, but we're over 2.3 million for that, for full installation. Mm -hmm. And then I'm trying to figure out the, the uh, dryer piece. I would love to do both at the same time rather than cost more money to do the second piece later. Mm -hmm. um, but as soon as we get through the budgets and we get rolling on these big projects and construction, I'm going to, uh, my, myself and the staff are going to knuckle down with Ty and Bond to, to, to work hard on that. Okay. And um, the fuel, the, so I have two more questions. The fuel, did Cat, um, and this is to anybody who knows that, but did Carol call and say she had locked in prices up to a certain date and time? I, As I recall, it was something where she, and, and when does that expire? Does anybody know that? Anyone? She had a certain fuel price. I don't uh, think I, it was. Um, it's not gasoline. It would be. Yeah, it's not oil. gasoline. It's not gasoline. It would be oil or that sort of thing. Yeah. It was natural gas. And it okay. Was, she said it was okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thanks to everybody who knew that. So under your sewer and enterprise fund budget, I looked with that wonderful chart that we got. It looks like you have um, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Under that, you have 7, 8, 10, like 14, 14 people, roughly 14 people under that budget. Yes, yes. There's a few people that are halves or thirds, uh, okay. so, but I think it equals 14. All right. So, so while we're on this one, I wanted to go down to the the indirect costs on this. Mm -hmm. um, um, 
the line item 6000991059655. Um, we have uh, the indirect costs for retirement, life insurance, health insurance, Medicare match. This one says indirect costs, other department transfers. And in ah. fiscal year 19, it was zero. And that's up now. It's up 26% this year. It increased by 20,000. What is that about? And I, I think this would be more for Liz because I... Yeah, I'm just looking at it. 95, I have the... What page, what number? Um, it's... 178. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm there. <laughs> ah. So some of that is what is known as it's called shared expenses. So what it is is based it's a prorated amount of say the treasurer collector budget, the um accounting the legal the postage the information technology um the, it's a prorated amount based upon level of appropriations um and then additionally a little more um and i think that one particular year you're looking at is it was a bad year and they just didn't do it um so i also in there is workers comp and i've worked with maya to break out maya is our our um insurance agent for workers comp and property liability um i've worked with them to break things out so that is a straight workers comp is a straight calculation upon salaries and exper an experience rating depending on the nature of the position so some positions are more dangerous than others um so anyway that has that's worked into the budget as well so so oh you know what those are actual costs now that i look at that so one of the things on enterprise funds is you come up with a bottom line number for indirects mm -hmm. and you can't go over it. So if some of these others came in higher, that also could be a reason why there's not showing anything there than the original budget. So, um, so in other words, those amounts our actual costs they're done this way because you can't appropriate something twice mm -hmm. so for example health insurance is in the general fund you can't appropriate it there and appropriate it in the enterprise funds because the tax recap sheet will not balance so what is done is this is shown as a revenue stream coming into the city to reimburse for these costs however you can't go over what you're budgeting for bottom line on the indirects. And that, so this is an accounting question for you then. Um, I, I just don't understand that. And this is the first year that I really recognize this, but when we do the total amount to be raised and then we have under like our total amount, to be raised, then under that we have cherry sheet receipts, buildings are, and then we have, the like this is like receipts correct so, so i just thought could you explain that because it actually makes a big difference those two numbers that's why i was kind of focusing on them it we, does it makes a huge difference yes otherwise you would have to cut the general fund budget by that amount if you took them out um because it's a revenue source um again the health i'm just going to use health insurance because it's easier to understand that that mm -hmm. idea we all the health insurance is budgeted in the general fund it is appropriated right so when you vote this and i think i i wrote um on the bottom of each financial order why why this is um 
you don't also appropriate that amount in the enterprise fund. You show it as they're going to pay the general fund for this. The general fund views that as revenue coming in when they pay the general fund. So that's why it's on that second sheet. There's a lot. That second sheet brings everything together, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so between water and sewer, that's 880000 zero five eight that's being counted counted on in the whole tax rate and appropriation calculation mm. right okay i know it's not there's not there's not really not unless you've done the tax rate re recap sheet it, it, it that's when it really clicks because you can actually see where it won't balance if you don't do this. Okay. Um, Councilor Disorder, did you have another question or I I have a question for Liz in regard to this? <laughs> okay. Um I just I want to know why it's a 26% increase. Retirement? But if you are but if you are listing, let me just see here. If you are already listing indirect cost retirement, then you also are listing indirect costs, other departmental transfers going up 26%. I guess I'm not understanding. So if why you get the financial order, we don't appropriate that amount. We, but we have to say that they will pay the general fund for that. Uh, you, no, is, okay. Does that mean that the sewer fund is going to pay the general fund $95,000 on that line item, which correct. is 26% increase so, from last year? Correct. It, it, we've all seen the pension schedule. Um, but what, but if you're talking about, if you're talking about retirement costs, it has its own, its own line, its own line item. And actually, the request is down on the retirement. Oh, oh, oh. So, the, all right, let me tell you how the retirement actual appropriation each year works. Okay. So, that, that will be helpful. Um, so, each September, all the salaries for the city are given for the folks who are in the um, Greenfield City Retirement to the Retirement Board. So if salaries go up or down, it influences their percentage of the total appropriation. Does, mm -hmm. is this making sense? Okay. Yes. So um, in this instance, their percentage did go down of salaries. Um, I don't know if I have last year's in front of me, but um, retirement, retirement. I believe last year it was 4% and it went down to 3.28. So that that is why you're seeing that. As a grand overall, um, this is the number, the percentage of salaries. And it's really the only way you can prorate this out is because it's the salaries that determine the assessment. So, and it, and it lags a year as okay. well. It okay. lags a year as well. So mm -hmm. we this number taken this upcoming September, that will be for FY24. Mm -hmm. So okay. um, it also lags a year. So folks understand that the, the actual assessment amount. So, but my, my, I'm sorry to be obtuse, but my question, my question is, if um, if I understand what indirect costs are, and I can see all the different line items, indirect costs for life insurance and retirement, in this one, indirect costs, it says other department transfers, it's gone up 26%. What are those in? in okay, I, I read those off. Okay. Um, I'll read them. Again, they're um, 
what they're called is shared cost centers. So in other words, the treasurer's office takes care of every single department and they are charged based upon total appropriations, their share of the treasurer's budget, okay. their share of the HR budget, their share of the IT budget, because IT covers everyone, Sure. Share of accounting, their share of audit, their share of the postage, because we mail out all their bills, their share of legal, their share of the pen. Well, that's not in that. But yeah. No, the pension's separate and workers comp is separate. So I'm just going to read off those ones. Okay. Um, so really, it's the, oh, and the general insurance, property, liability, auto, all that too. Okay. That's broken out by Maya. Got it. So that's what all that is. And believe it or not, it's a fair amount. Um, it is. And it fluctuates with the total amount of the appropriations each year. So in other words, I take the general fund appropriation, the water fund appropriation, the sewer fund appropriation, and the GSET appropriation. These are all our appropriations. What percent is everybody of that? Okay. And that's how I do this on the indirects. Okay. As a follow-up, if I may? Yes, go ahead. Um, so is that is that percentage that you're saying just based on, um, is it based on the, the revenue? Is it based on the size of the department? It, like it's the based or salary? on the appropriation. So okay. in other words, I have for the general fund, I, you know, I have the, um, oh heck, where is it? The 58329672. For water, I have 1666258. That's without indirects. For sewer, I have 25650093 without indirects. For GSET, I have 2042234, and that's without indirects. These are all appropriations for these. For these um, departments that are all served by these shared cost centers. Gotcha. May I follow up on that? Yes, go ahead, well, Kelsey. Just, so um, to, and I, I understand what you're saying. And we, we talked about the, the number of employees. Maybe it's not tied to that, but it would seem to me that it should be um, between the water and the sewer enterprise. Well, there's 27 the, people and then there's what well, was 20, 27. And I think that's 38 that are not included in this. So is where the, that comes into play is on benefits. So you take the actual people for health insurance and the salaries for them for the Medicare tax and the life insurance as well. You actually take those folks and figure that out with with each of the increases. In the, like your health insurance, your Medicare, well, Medicare doesn't go up, but um, life insurance increase. So you take the actuals of the people in there and that piece goes there. It's the shared cost centers that is done in the other way that one other line that you've been asking about. Uh, and follow up if I may. So at, at some point, maybe before we deliberate, would we be able to see the indirect cost for the other, for the other half? Of, oh, it was more than half of the budget, more than half of the DPW budget in general. There's 27 people under water and sewer. And just to, to see their indirect costs because that makes a huge difference in the, the budget at the end i think because you're counting it as receipts you have to but well no i believe uh, i you know municipal finance far better than i do and yeah. every time that we talk i realize that more i was just interested because yeah the, um again i can't really use people's name it's in showing you the health insurance um I can just show you the number of plans mm. um, for for who has insurance and who doesn't, you know? Okay. Um, and that's the other thing is not everybody takes health insurance. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay. Um, so I, I have, it, it's kind of a formal question, but it's for the record, uh, Marlo. Um, when we see clothing allowances in the DPW budget, I am assuming that they are contractual, and I'm also assuming that they are for the protection of the employees. Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes, it, it is contractual, um, and, it, and it's really, they call it a clothing allowance, but it's a boot and clothing allowance uh, combined. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, if we don't have any more questions on sewer, we'll move on to water. Marla, would you like to walk us through this? Uh, sure. Um, much like the other budgets, um, as we all know, we we uh, settled two contracts and a new contract was created um, with central maintenance. But the the, uh, co the the W schedule contract came into play here. Um, the, the salary lines have increased, um, like the other budgets. Um, and I think the, the big ad here, I, Liz touched on it earlier, is this year we were, we were well enough off to um, add 100,000 to water main materials and supplies to the budget, um, which we haven't had in quite a few years um, due to our retained earnings being so sore um, and down. But um, I, we, we both thought this was a great idea. Um, uh, I brought it up a couple of times. I don't mean to bring it up again, but we know what happened last July and August. Um, the current budget is in uh, it was hit pretty severe. Obviously, you don't expect something like that uh, in a regular budget year. So, um, contractual obligations and a hundred thousand added in water mains are are the the big tickets um, in 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 the water uh, enterprise. And, and fuel costs, energy costs, electricity costs. Um, a few of our facilities do propane. We have uh, propane generators, diesel generators for our water facilities. Um, again, I didn't have the crystal ball, so I level funded a lot of those. Um, I did converse with Carol when I was building my budget throughout the winter. So um, as we all know, not to sound like a broken record, but that changed after January 14th. So. Um, I expect to be short in those areas. Does anybody have any questions on our water budget, our water enterprise fund? Yeah, and if I may add one, another fairly Please. significant increase was the lab, lab testing materials and supplies. Um, as we go through regulatory, um, we, we had a whole bunch of things added, uh, PFAs, PFOs, the different compounds that make them up that have to test for regular uh, regularly now that are regulatory whereas they were were um, they weren't mandatory before but they are now excuse me okay thank you Councilor Forgy yes go ahead I Councilor just Sorry. wanted to point out that that bottom line on this one also um, the indirects the indirect cost transfers of the department all the, the health and life insurance, et cetera, was significantly down and that that went up 19.3%. Okay. I had so, it rounded at 20. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, anybody have any questions? Uh, do we need to go back and revisit any of the DPW uh, budget? before we move on to economic development and marketing. I, I just a question. Yes, go ahead. Um, uh, Director Warner, you had mentioned before that some of the, the sewer uh, facility was offset by the Millbrook uh, solar. Is that correct? Yes, you'll see under electricity. Mm -hmm. for WWPCF in the in the budget book. Right. Is that also does that also apply? I'm seeing like a there's a Millbook Wells electricity. Is that an expense of this part? That I'm that's what I'm looking at, right? Yeah, this is the expense part. 
Yeah. So is there some part of the that's paying for that out of the water fund? Uh, yes, it's it's one of the line items for electricity at Millbrook. Um, but uh, Carol could answer that better than me. She she did all the contracts on that that um, solar field. For okay. some reason, how it gets fed back into the the grid, it worked out to where. I guess our biggest need was at the wastewater treatment plant for the credits. But I, I think your question is going towards how come we're not feeding it right into the, the wells there, correct? Well, well, yeah, It. I mean, I guess it just seems weird that if we're paying out of the water fund, paying for the, the well electricity, but then we're recouping it back on the, I guess the other end somehow, we, uh, how is, how is they that giving us out? credits on the electric bill. Okay. Yeah. But the water department is solely paying for. Right. It's broken out. Believe it or okay. not. Carol, Carol can speak to that better. Um, but they do make sure the credits go to the right place. <laughs> right. The, the, the water budget is, is in no way support, uh, supporting or sustaining that solar field. Okay. So in other words, so in other words, we're not paying anything for that solar field to be out there. So we're not taking away from from water budget to support that solar field. It's just all done through the credits. And uh, as we know, Carol has all of them crazy formulas and has that down. But um, yeah. right. your question for her. OK. I, I did want to hit on the fuel real quick. Uh, sure. One other thing I wanted Please. to mention. Uh, we're in a third year of a three-year contract with Sandry's. They were they they got the contract three years ago, almost three years ago. And the way these contracts are set up is we pay a certain amount per gallon below pump price. Okay. Those contracts are never never set up, nor would anybody commit to per gallon price for three years, because um, even even the fuel companies can't predict what it's going to look like two years from now. So um, currently we're paying 13 cents below pump price. Um, and I believe Laura Phelps is preparing that contract for uh, July 1. We're, we're going to get that out soon because we expire on June 30th. So the crystal ball, I guess, would be a good answer wherever those bids come in. Um, and there's certain parameters that a company has to follow. They have to provide 24-7 fuel for police, fire, and DPW in emergencies, so on and so forth. So they have to have backup power. There's there's many things that go into the contract. It's not just as simple as gas and, and diesel, just so everyone knows. Thank you. Yep. And I do have a couple revolving, Councilor Forgy. Please. Do I have a 1590 revolving count uh, account, or I should say budget. Um, this is the revolving account for the transfer station. Um, this provides, we have eight employees at the transfer station, but two of them are paid out of this revolving fund and it covers their health insurance and benefits, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, and that about covers it. It went up, a actually it went, um, went up just a little bit um because of the you know contract contract uh, stuff and so on and so forth i'm sorry what where are we on that i don't see that under the revolving it's on 67 67 okay thank you Well, go back a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. 65. 65. <laughs> yeah. and, and Marlo, you said there were two FTEs that come out, uh, that salary wages and benefits come out of that? Yes, right on the first line. Okay, got them. Thank you. Okay. And moving and, along. And then the last. And, whoop! I'm sorry. Go ahead. And what's the 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 balance in that? Oh, right now, as far as what's in there. Mm 
I have not looked at it honestly. I can get that for you. I have not looked at that recently, like three or four weeks. Okay. I kind of have it on the revenue report that I wrote. It mm -hmm. would be off to the right. Mm -hmm. um, but I can run it. Kind of, it closes to the general fund, so everybody knows that as a local receipt. Um, Fifteen ninety, correct? Yes. Yes. Thank you. I can just run that fairly quickly for you. <sighs> Even though it doesn't seem like quickly. It really is <laughs> relatively quickly in the scheme of things. I'm going to uh, fill in. Right now we're at 162. 891.64. So that's definitely going to come in a little over. Um, it already is a little over. Um, okay. 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 And then I think we have signage. Yeah, this is a, a very small account, and I guess to summarize the best way is is our sign machine was purchased by the FERCOG back in 2016, and we had had an agreement where Franklin County cities and towns can come to Greenfield and make their signs, and obviously we would charge them, so on and so forth. Um, so we have to kind of run this account. It was part of the agreement with with FERCOG. But I'll tell you, we don't get, we don't have much action in this budget these days. Um, we had a little bit last year, uh, <laughs> but as of, of recent recent times, we're not seeing a lot of action. And and I am going to reach out to FERCOG here shortly and find out, you know, how we want to go forward with this. For the simple fact that there's not anybody partaking in the the original program, and I'm hoping that we will we will own this time machine at that point, so to speak. So. Okay, I can't see all of you, but if there's any more questions from uh, Director Warner, now is the opportunity to ask them. We're going to uh, move on. Um, under the revolving on, I think it's cemetery and burial, you're a part of that one too. There's a little bit. Do, do you have much to do with that one that's on page 61? It's um, uh, Health Department, DPW, Cemetery Commission, burial permit, cemetery, and the spending limit is 10000 I just wondered what would the balance in that was, and if you actually, um, the balance is available for expenditure, and is that something that you're ever involved or much involved with because it has your name listed in it as one of the departments? Um, no, I think that's very actually, actually no on my on my end. Okay, um, all right, fine. Yeah, I just think that's the Board of Health, and that comes that yeah. is distinct to them. We do have a representative on the committee that that is in the DPW Engineering Department uh, that assists on different things. Okay, if we are good to go, we want to thank you so much, Director Warner. Um, <laughs> next year, um, we'll put you on for your own meeting on your own evening, and we'll get all through DPW at once. So we appreciate very much you being available to us for two uh, meetings. That's, you know, that's double duty. And oh, um, Oh, I'll be more than happy to share with Mr. Lunt. We've been kind of a team for a few years. Uh, and we well, we both have enterprise funds, so I just thought I'd throw that out. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much for all your help, and thank you for the work you and your department do to support um, the city of Greenfield. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. And if anybody has any questions, I think everybody has my cell and my email between now and Thursday. Okay. Uh, okay. That sounds great. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Um, we're moving on. Next, we are going to uh, economic development and marketing. And I see MJ mm -hmm. Adams is out there. And I'd like to welcome you, MJ, and um, appreciate um, your efforts on behalf of Greenfield. So, Director Adams, uh, would you lead us off? Let us know what's going on with your budget. Sure. Um, I, I, I just want to start off, and I, I was happy to sit through Marlo's presentation because I can't tell you enough how much I appreciate having a colleague like Marlo in his department because no one of us is an island as we do our work. And the important work that we do in the city, you know, making it attractive, um, robust, healthy, uh, manageable for folks only works when we all work together. And I've got to say that uh, I'm very pleased to have the colleagues that I have that that we pull it off. Uh, and, and the DPW, um, I, I don't feel like there's a day that goes by that I don't call on the DPW and we work very well together. So I'm just very appreciative and, and hope that you are mindful of the, the staffing needs that um, Marlo has expressed because we can only do our good work on the shoulders of their good work. Um, that said, I have, I think, a, a pretty amazing team that uh, supports the, the cities and its efforts to improve the economic uh, condition of the city under the mayor's office. Um, you know that my office is largely responsible for some grants that we receive, the community development block grants. We are a mini entitlement community, which means we get approximately $825,000 a year that we work closely with the mayor uh, to make some decisions about where we can best apply that. Uh, we've done uh, many activities over the year. I'm happy to provide a report on all of those and more recently, we've sort of shifted gears so that we are really working hand in hand with the city's efforts to upgrade its infrastructure, both this uh, the past couple of years on West Street and Hope Street and uh, Pleasant and School Street to make sure that the, the good work that is done is supported by the infrastructure that no one, no one frequently sees, but it's there and when it fails, we know it. Um, so um, like I said, I have uh, some terrific staff. I have a, a Community Development Administrator, Lindsay Rowe, and she is responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of our Community Development Block Grant. I have a grant program assistant, Christian um, LaPlante, and he joined us last July. Uh, he's, he's a young man out of college, very interested in working in municipal uh, government or the political arena. And uh, I have shared with him that in working in our department, you touch every aspect of municipal operations. I'll say, except for cemeteries, that sort of surprised me for a moment. Um, well, maybe with historic preservation and gravestone preservation, but um, you know, it's a it's a great office in that we we do touch many different uh, departments in the town. Uh, and the other thing that uh, I, I work uh, both in, I I'm responsible for the oversight of the community development block grants and several other grants that we write and acquire and administer, but also in the, the point person on economic development activity for the mayor's office. Uh, our office also assumes responsibility for uh, providing staffing support to the Greenfield Redevelopment Authority, the Crossroads Cultural District, the Community Preservation Commission, and the Commission on Disability Access. So we are supporting some other uh, municipal operations as well. Um, our requesting our request this year uh, is for you know partial salary support for the, some of the staff in my department and then some ongoing operations. Um, I don't know if you know my my position is a bit of a hybrid. Uh, when I stepped into the position, I was fifty percent funded by CDBG grant funds and fifty percent funded by the um, general fund and. Uh, the work that I do uh, is really substantially around economic development. Uh, it works okay with the, the split funding source because a lot of our community development block grant work is focused on our downtown, both our downtown revitalization plan, the work we've been doing with the First National Bank. Uh, really, tr And um, I, I always hate to say this publicly because it sounds awful, but our downtown is designated as a slum and blight district. <laughs> <laughs> and because of that, we actually get some nice flexibility on some of the grant funds that come our way, but it does sound awful. Who wants to go around tooting their horn that they're a slum and blight district? Um, but we're trying to That's marketing. You did. <laughs> we won't say that in our marketing, but we are climbing out of that. And I'll share with you, we only have that designation until 
January 2026. It's a 10-year designation. Uh, so we should be mindful that the, the good work that we're doing is causing us to climb out of that, but it also puts a very distinct time frame on some of the work that needs to be accomplished to um, be able to take advantage of the flexibility that the community development block grants extend you when you are a slum and blight district. Um, so the funding request includes um, partial coverage of my full-time salary, uh, part-time, um, and I think it's a, 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 the, uh, the general fund, we've asked for 60% of my salary. Last year it was 50-50. We were hoping this year to move to 100% coverage from the general fund on my salary, but we know that we're under some pretty tight budget constraints. So we're gonna we carve that back a little and we'll do 60-40, where 60% will be covered by the general fund, 40% by our block grant funds. Um, my, uh, the other uh, funding, we, the other salary coverage from my department will be uh, covering the cost of the grant program assistant for 50% of the time. He really does provide some pretty extraordinary support in economic development activity. Uh, he's the he's the he's the guy who keeps visit greenfieldma.com up to date, and he's been uh, a real treasure um, in terms of supporting, providing some administrative support for the for the not so CDBG focused activity that my department has taken on. The uh, the other things that we're requesting funding for, we level funded from our last year's request. The only, with the exception is that our rent went up a little. We actually are co-located with GSET across the street in the TD Bank building, and the rent's going up slightly. So that is the only budget increase that you see from year to year in our request. That said, um, my department is responsible for uh, upgrading the Fisk Avenue parking lot. We, we write a lot of grants uh, for the city. Um, and because of that, we're able actually to do some pretty marvelous things. Some things we've been planning to do for a while and we're not quite there yet, like the First National Bank building, but um, the, the Fisk Avenue Park Pocket Park, I think is just a really terrific example of what my department can do, looking at something that was planned close to 12 years, uh, 10 years ago, and finally bringing it to fruition. But also, like I said, working closely with the downtown businesses, the local, economic development organizations to really take a look at Greenfield's future and set us on a course that is positive and robust and provides a positive future for us. So that's my elevator pitch. It was probably longer than 90 seconds, but I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. We appreciate that. Um, okay, who's got some questions for MJ? Hi, I do. Okay, I, I, know, I, I always have my hand up. I'm sorry, everybody. I can never see you. You never make it to the same screen I'm on. Well, and I, I would be offended if she didn't ask a question. <laughs> so your, your staff includes, it's actually three people then. We would say that it's three people. It's and, three people, yes. And then there's also, I also forgot to mention, there's a, a, a 0.01 rehab specialist that we have on, on call also, uh, who's fully grant funded. Uh, and he does the technical piece on the housing rehab projects that we have underway. Okay. So, um, so three staff, and would you say that uh, two, over three quarters of them were funded by the CDBG, the, the wages and stuff? Well, I'm right. I'm point four funded in next year's budget. I'm point point four funded. Uh, Lindsay is fully funded and Christian is 50% uh, funded. So, okay. Help me Got with it. the math. <laughs> um, that's all right. So um, you mentioned the flexibility mm -hmm. that we have now because we're listed as that name that we don't have to keep saying. Mm -hmm. um, so, cause I'm trying to help with the advertisement too. <laughs> so, um, I wanted to know what, what does that mean? Like when you said we have more flexibility. So like, what can we do now that we're not going to be able to do once we get out of that not so pleasant designation? <laughs> sure. So the slum and blight designation is that you, when you have community development block grants, you need to meet national objectives. And there's three national objectives, but one of them is never used. And that's for urgent critical need. The other two objectives that you need to meet. So you have to meet one of one or the other, and that is either 50% of the, 51% of the people who are benefited by your activity are low or moderate income people. 
and the second one is or it's a slum and blight area and the activity that you're doing is eliminating the slumming and blighting conditions <laughs> that lead to that designation so greenfield is actually only 49.7 percent low mod Mm -hmm. by the state's calculations. So if we were, if Greenfield was 51 or 53% low mod by the state's calculation, we could do just about anything anywhere and make the case that it would benefit more than 51% of the people who would benefit from this would be uh, lower moderate income people. But since we're below that 51% designation, we then have to then lean to the slum and blight. And it's our central business district that is designated as a slum and blight district. So we're able to do activities without needing to prove that more than 51% of the people who benefit from that are slum and are, are low mod <laughs> individuals. Um, I have a couple of follow-ups. If I, sure. Can I Go keep going? Sure. Yes. And so is that, so we have, the economic opportunity zones mm -hmm. is that the same because they go on a little further than the central Bez business district right the uh census tract 413 and 414 are mm -hmm. our opportunity zones and that is the designation that we applied for and received from the federal government that said they're they're eligible for certain activities for economic incentives that take place or benefit people within those districts <laughs> Okay. It's an addition to. It's an addition to. Part of, yeah. Um, so, so if an activity happens in Census Tract 413 or 414, there are some tax advantages for people who invest in those. And that's different than okay, receiving. That's entirely different. Okay. Because I was. Federal was, grant money to do activities that the municipality is trying to do. Mm -hmm. How far out does that central business district go? Where does, which, where does it end? Ah. Uh, uh, I'm happy to get you a map. I believe it goes, I want to say up to Pierce Street. I think it's at the northern edge of 413. Okay. All right. So just oh, keep, I'm sorry. this That's is my little pitch. This is my pitch for this. Can we keep in mind Elm That's Terrace it. and their sidewalks? Uh, I, I'm actually going to correct myself. That 413, that Pierce Street is the northern edge of Census Tract 413. Yeah, the slum and blight district is actually closer into the central business district. So I'm probably going to say Pleasant Street is probably the north district of it. And oh. Elm Terrace is not going to be in that. OK. All right. All right. Well, that ends that. Um, <laughs> but I'm more than happy to get you a map of the outline of where it is. Right. Well, that 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 would be lovely. Thank you. Um, and now did your office size, your rent increase, did your office size increase? No, I believe the rent went up. Um, your, we, your rent went up. Yeah, I think the I, it, we co-locate with G said, and I. I know. Went up. His went down. So that's why I wondered if yours increased. Oh, his rent went down. But we'll get to that later. But your office, your amount. John has an answer on that. I, and and yeah, the the overall rent went up. Our rent went down because we got out of some. We have less square footage. So you're so who has the other square footage? It's uh, one high, is it not? To, re, to redo her, the, her square footage stayed the same. The overall rent went up, so her percentage of the overall rent. rent I get went. it. Okay. And then right. she's actually a higher percentage of the total, even though her actual square footage didn't increase. Mm -hmm. And we took some of the back storage parts of the building and said we don't want to rent those. Going Very forward. good. So yeah. Very good. Thank you, John. <laughs> that was, that's all for me. All right. I'll open it up to any other counselors. Do you have any questions? It's very straightforward. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Director Adams, for being with us this evening. Um, I guess uh, it will be a great relief for all of us when we vote this budget. So we thank you again. <laughs> Um, if anybody's got any questions, I know you can reach out to MJ and ask her what, what you need to know. In the meantime, we'll say good evening and thank you for being with us. And we'll be moving along to GSET. So thank you again, MJ. All right. Good night now. Good night. Thanks, MJ. Okay. So our agenda now has goes to GSET. And, um, 
for everybody that's just let me grab this for everybody that is following along in their budget book that is um, page 186 and 87 88 and 89 so director lund is here good evening john thank you Hi. welcome uh, thank you for being with us and um we appreciate you taking the time and sure. um what would you like us to know about your budget uh well uh it is a budget that reflects the fact that uh, we're continuing to grow but as a slower pace as we get more and more developed in greenfield uh, last year we're going to grow in this fiscal year about 23 24 percent and next year we're budgeted to grow by i believe it's about 12 percent so we're trying to be conservative um it is uh, a budget that will uh be sustainable and profitable the main increases in the budget for next year are uh debt service um we have retirement that's going up like much everyone. Um, there are increases that are in the budget that are budgeted for projected sales, but actually vary with projected sales. So if we don't get the sales, we don't incur the expense. That is uh, bank and merchant fees uh, under uh, um, operations. We also pay for um, the programming for the TV customers that we have as well. And that's tied into how many TV customers we have at any given time. We have about 550 homes right now that have TV from us. And we have uh, just about 1,500 homes that carry uh, only our internet. So we've grown to, it's just under 2,000 homes. Um, we are working on expanding into the north of Greenfield. I think like everyone else you talk to, supply chain is really, really tough right now. Um, deliveries are quite difficult. Prices have gone up. Um, that is the ARPA project that we are working on. And we're waiting on, on um, projects and we're also continuing to work on all the proper permits and all the things that we need to make that happen. Uh, we do think that will be a good source of growth for the upcoming year. And um, we're at the moment not anticipating, there is, let's put it this way, there is no price increase in the budget. I will never categorically say that won't happen because we operate in a competitive market unlike other enterprise funds where we don't have a monopoly on services here, but it is not our intention to do that. Uh, we continue to save, it's really over $1.2 million a year for local customers versus traditional uh, or previous legacy options that they have. I do not have data, but I strongly believe from the anecdotal evidence that we get from customers that that money stays local I also know it's been a help for economic development to keep some large companies in Greenfield. We have some very good enterprise customers who um, contract with us, and we also contract for the town, too. So the main goals we have for next year are, are in the budget book, and it's really just to continue to expand. We're trying to get to about 93% total coverage of uh, homes in Greenfield. And we're going to do that through increasing um, subscribers in the network area we already have and working to develop the North Greenfield network and bring it online as soon as we can. Thank you. Um, do we have questions? Okay. Yeah. Um, go ahead, Council Toronto. Um, so since we were talking about these before with other ones, uh, I'm sure that there's a reason, but uh, what is the, what is that reason for the indirect cost going to goose eggs? <laughs> so, so we did have this discussion at, I think it was at the budget overview meeting 
um, the executive presentation because that question was asked. Okay. Um, I forgot. So John indicated there's two reasons. One, um, when we were setting the tax rate last year, the Department of Revenue said they did not want any more deficits. So in an attempt to not have a deficit, we're not charging the indirects. But the second piece, in order to not have a deficit, um, was the debt service going up. And it was it's significant there, 186,000. Right. And so um, I, as I had indicated that the largest part of that is the original 5 million authorization. Um, and quite honestly, as I stated, I don't think um, direct manager Lunt would have necessarily spent it in the same manner as the original um, manager of GSEC. However, he has to deal with the ramifications of of that. <laughs> and the debt, is, the five million is a lot. There was one or two bands that got a shorter life um, that also spiked that some. And so therefore, in, in order to ensure to not have the deficit and also the long-term um, sustainability, not viability, um, long-term footing for GSET um, is best that we don't do this for a year or two. Um, and the other thing to understand is that FY23 is only the fifth year of GSET being an, an enterprise. So it's not like they just walked out and got customers. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it has taken, and you can see the growth through the years. And John can, if you want, provide you wonderful information on that. <laughs> um, but that, that's the main reason. Um, and it's only going to last a year or two. So I guess maybe I I'm just confused would, by it. what who covers that cost then because they're, they're still going to be general, cost. For general fund, the work. general fund is covering it. Um, okay. And if you look back, though, it's in a way when you have a deficit, you're and you raise it on the recap, you're covering it after the fact. Okay. We are addressing it before the fact. <laughs> by doing this and it really comes from the same source is in terms of funding it whether right. you do it after the fact it's being raised by taxes whether you do it before it's being raised by taxes so we are just trying to keep a ensure G gset is on good footing and b comply with the people who have to approve our tax rate <laughs> Um, the only thing I would add to that is the, yeah. you know, the timing for a new business and the growth of a new business yeah. isn't something that DOR has really any experience with. So their idea of when yeah. things should become profitable probably doesn't jive with anyone who's actually ever run a business in the private sector. So I think between that and the fact that with the, the $5 million bond, and the fact that there were a few bonds that had a much shorter maturity than I would have would have advocated for that added quite a bit to the bond service for the upcoming several years. I think those are the two main reasons. Yeah. So, so I guess to follow up, so does that mean that the percentage for the other departments is higher in contributing? To, to kind of offset that? No. So when I go, so when I was reading the appropriation numbers to you for each mm -hmm. of the departments, I yep. said before indirects. So okay. that's before considered indirects. outside. Yes. Okay. Got it. Thank you. More questions? I, I have more. Councilor DeSorga. Um, John, thanks for being here. So how many people? Sure are in your office? Uh, we have eight people at GC, including me. 
and does that include what does OSP stand for? That's some kind of a, outside, outside, plant. outside the plant. Outside the people who actually go out and do the work. We have two people in outside plant, and those are the people who actually go outside and do the work on the radios and on the fiber optic cable that's up on the poles. Okay, so there's a total of eight personnel. Okay, yes. I had to I had to look up what what that was in Google to find out what an OSP <laughs> was. Just so you know, um, and it came out with something else. Um, so, um, but I, I did figure it out. So I have several I have several questions. Sure. Um, so you um, let's start at the beginning. The electric the electricity and the pole that's gone up seventy eight percent. Yeah, um, that can you explain that? Sure. That is a function of being on more poles. It's not okay. it's in the electricity category, but it mm -hmm. is actually more than that. It's electricity plus the fees that we pay to Eversource and Verizon to actually be on poles. Okay. They are, they are on the public way. We don't get to charge them, but they get to charge us. So I'm delighted that you have more poles. And yes. because that means we're doing well. 2,243. Okay. And I can't wait till you come to our place without polls. Um, <laughs> so, and I see your rent went down. The audit, the accounting and audit was 4,800. Um, did you have an audit or did you pay for part of our audit? We take part in the town audit and that's a percentage that, that comes to us from the town. Okay, so we put like a figure of sixty thousand in our audit. A budget line? No, don't ask. No. Oh, sorry. Was that a bad, was no, that no, a bad no, question? No, 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 no. It's fine to ask. Um, it's just that um, they aren't paying for part of our audit. Um, I thought um, the only one who pays for part of our audit is um, CDBG, and that's because of the single audit. Okay. Um. But no, I think that was more accounting services so that oh, okay. if G set so desired <laughs> um, or needed, um, mm -hmm. because well, I don't believe it's been spent. Um, okay. Yeah. That's okay. I just. No, I just. Um, yeah, I, I got where you going, I, guess, is why. I was asking about. Um, so. I, what I don't see in this, and maybe this is tied to the debt. So I have questions about the debt and I have questions about, I guess uh, it would be what we were spending on the build out because we did not in the capital project put anything we did, you know, with that line item was eliminated the, the hundred thousand because you didn't need that. So there's 650,000 for build out. And I don't see this anywhere in this budget. That's because it's not a portion of the general fund budget that is grant funded under ARPA. And um, that is money that is spent on engineering, survey and design, on working with uh, poll owners, on purchasing of materials. Um, we don't use ARPA to pay for our people, but there are, for example, certain very specific uh jobs that like for example the the fusing of the very large 96 count 144 count uh, fiber optic cables there's really specialized equipment for that so we are going to contract out with people for that and that's an acceptable use of arpa money as well so essentially arpa money can be used for equipment outside labor engineering and design and survey it can also be used, and, and we, we're just starting to think about this. I haven't even spoken to the mayor about this. Uh, in the same way that CDBG money is used uh, in terms of helping low-income people uh, have easier access to signing up for GSEP. I, you, you may know about 10% of all of our customers now take advantage of the Affordable Connectivity Program, mm -hmm. and which has saved a tremendous amount of money. It saves... I believe it's about $75,000 a year for people. Um, 
but I may have that number wrong. Pardon me. I know it saved over $4,000 last month. Um, so those are what our money is allowed for. And since the build out that we want to do uh, is all in an ARPA area. In fact, all of Greenfield is designated as underserved by the final rule from the Department of the Treasury. That is what governs ARPA money. And since ARPA was specifically allocated for water, sewer, and broadband, that's what we're going to use it for. That's wonderful. And I'm delighted. I just, I, I was looking at it and I thought I didn't understand the budgeting part of it, which right. you seem to have gotten, be you've all gotten better than I have. So that was great. Um, my last was on the, the borrowings. Um, so, uh, which I think probably would be more directed at um, dire Director Gilman. But so for one, two, three, four, four years or however, we paid, how much is band interest compared to when you bond it? What's what's the difference in the rate for bands are bond anticipation notes. So yes. just because it was taken doesn't mean it was bonded in total. So what you see, like the ninety eight thousand and two ninety four thousand, right? Um, that is interest and pay down of uh, principal. It says band interest pay down, but you have to start paying the principal down for any municipal loan after a couple of years, right? So, that basically 294, 294, um, it's it's adopted and amended, so it isn't three years, it's actually two years of 294, 120. This year it jumps up to 410,000 for the reasons we talked about earlier. So after this year, we will have paid off about a million dollars of the principal of the debt. Um, and we have bonds that mature over can come, I think the longest one is 14 years. Yeah. And unfortunately, some that are, are maturing over three years instead of a longer period. That represents both the initial $5 million bond appropriation and the capital bonds that we have asked for in the past. And we, we didn't ask for it this year because of ARPA, but we may come back again next year and ask if we need a truck or if there's a specific issue. But we think ARPA money will will be able to fund most of our expansion with ARPA for the next year or two. Thank you. Um, so what I just wanted to know the difference in the interest rate. So when you borrow long term, when we when we finally bonded for it, is the interest rate a lot less than it is on a temporary? That was, I guess, how I should have phrased it. Um, I would have to look back at this, but you're required to bond. Like you can only no, I, for so long, right? I imagine that it's. I imagine that the rate is higher on a temporary than it is on a long term. But I just wanted to know that. Yeah. It, just in general. Oh, okay. And not you don't have to go. Yeah. I was yeah. looking at the exact yeah. number. I don't do this. It it's is just, because. Um, when you're bonding, you go for the remaining life of the um, item you are bonding for. Right. Um, when you're banning, there's only a certain amount of years that that you can um, finance on that amount because it's a ban. Right. Um, so because you can spread it out longer, it ends up being less and That's a lower rate because, yes, okay. That's that's all I wanted to know. Like a credit card debt, there's a high rate, but if you go to take a mortgage over 20 years, it's a low rate. So I just so generally speaking, we wait till the thing is finished, and then we go to a, then we go to a long term bond. So so uh, the total we had we borrowed five million, and then we've um, and and then and we've paid back four hundred and fifty thousand. So now we just have four point five plus whatever we've allocated every year. Right. It's, it's actually original original three. Oh, sorry. I, it's, I just wanted to mention quickly that I, I think the city has done a good job in bonding and that there have been some very good bond premiums that have come that we have then put towards reducing the principal of the loan as well, too. So it's a little more complicated. Sometimes right. the bond premium can really change things, too. 
it can. Yeah. You know, it's a really good point because it's not just the original five million. It was also a hundred up from prior capital authorizations. It was one hundred ninety-five thousand, one hundred fifty thousand, and one hundred eighty-five thousand done with that. Mm -hmm. And the bond premium brought plus the principal payments, and the bond premium has right. brought that down for all of that to four point four four oh five. Um, that was actually long-term financed. So. so I just wanted to ask these questions because we have new people on this this year. And sure. I think how this all works is important to, to all of us to, to know and what the history of this is because we're going forward, you know, the revolving accounts and how those matter. So I know I asked a lot of questions, but I think we learn a lot by asking them. So that was great. You, you did a great job. And do you have any anticipation of when you'll be to the places that don't have I ask this every year? We're like, going as you fast as we and you can. know where I'm going. Right. We you know, <laughs> we have to work with outside partners to get permits who don't work on the same level of urgency that we do sometimes. So um we we're just continuing to work through that and making sure that we're set to go when we do go. We're hopeful that we will get it done in summer or fall of this year. But that I think we have a decent shot at that, uh, but I don't control all the variables. So I may come back and say, nope, it's gonna take a little longer or nope, we're gonna go a little faster. I'm gonna keep my $29 deposit in there for when it happens, John. And thank you for all you do. I was one of the first people to sign up and I'm, I'm um, anxiously awaiting this um, and delighted that, of the service that you provide. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, Mayor, did you want to comment? I just, well, one, Jenny, it's underground. That's more difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. And I know for a fact that that's also ledge. <laughs> There, there. Um, bad. But that's not my comment. My comment is uh, the point about it, the outside uh, partners. Um, we love to call them partners. Sometimes we wonder if they are um, because at the end of the day, in some ways, they are our competitors also. So um, we will work with them as much as we can. And uh, but they are they are part and parcel sometimes of what slows things down, just so people know. It's not a comment on the budget today uh, per se. It's just that um, we are gonna get service out to the Northern part of Greenfield and the other people that don't have it as fast as we can, as best we can. Um, other members of Ways and Means with questions? I just have a quick question. Sure, go ahead, please. I'm just wondering with an enterprise fund, right? So I'm looking at his his chart on uh, page 189, and it kind of shows expense and revenue kind of breaking even over the next couple of years. Um, looking at it from a business perspective, I, I would imagine, you know, as we start paying down debt and we're still charging for services, and I know you have still have maintenance costs and things like that, but what happens when revenue exceeds expense? Where does that, does that money just stay in that fund or does sure. it? It's a good question. And I can tell you that for the next three years, the debt service remains high and then it starts falling fairly precipitously. So um, it, this is, the, I have no doubt that eventually this will produce excess revenue. And there's a couple of things that happen to that. There uh, under chapter 164, um, we are required to look to the needs of the actual customers of GSET. But back when I first started years ago now, the Board of Commissioners wrote a letter to the town saying that the original intent of GSET was to eventually return money to the town. We still intend on doing that. I will say I want to build up a good base of retained earnings first because I think that's the responsible thing for us to do. But we already actually save the town quite a bit of money in that we provide internet to the town and to schools, not all the schools, but uh, we're working towards all the schools at a significant discount. But it is the intention and I will 
speak for the chair of the board it, it, that once we have gotten to the point where we are consistently producing significant excess revenue, we have um, a, a pilot letter that we've written, also a silent because we offer services in lieu of taxes, but a pilot agreement that will return money to the general fund. Thank you so much. Sure. John, I, I have a couple of questions for you if you bear with me. Um, sure. I want to go back to wages. So I want to go back to the number of employees you have. Um, they're all full time. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Um, how many of them are covered underneath a contract? Um, a union contract, excuse me, union contract. There are no union workers. They're all NRs. Okay. Is there, there are a some way? Some who are non exempt and some who are exempt, and some are paid on a wage schedule, and others are paid in, within a salary range that's defined. And we okay. work with HR to determine that. Okay. And how many people are signed under uh, wage uh, technology? The way uh, the category that actually has changed a fair amount in recent years. Um, in the last year, we went through and said to ourselves, All right, what are people really doing? So, there used to be 15 people working at GSET, now there's yes. eight. So, everyone at GSET wears a number of different hats. So, there are people who previously have been, for example, um partly in administration and partly in customer service that are now mostly in technology wages. Uh, there's a small amount of technology wages that last year were funded from other grant sources that aren't this year. Um, but the, the single largest, if you look, the largest portion of wages we have is unsurprisingly in technology. Um, it is a field, frankly, Every single tech person at GSEC could make substantially more money working somewhere else, but they're all believers in, in what GSEC is trying to do. Um, but it costs to bring in good tech people. Sure, sure. Um, and may I ask, please, um, what is your salary? Um, my salary is currently $87,500. It will go to 91250 next year. I didn't take a raise at all last year. So over two years, it will go from 87.5 to 91.250. Thank you. Sure. Um, does anybody else have any questions for uh, Director Lunn? Okay. So thank you, John, very much for being with us this evening sure. and presenting your budget to us. Um, this has been very fascinating. I continue to learn <laughs> more information <laughs> about GSET. So I thank you again for being with us. I hope you have a pleasant rest of the evening. Thank you. If anyone has any additional questions, I, I think you should all have my phone number and email. I'd be happy to talk to any of you at any time. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your effort. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Okay. Well, uh, that concludes the operating budget for 2023. Um, I don't, we, next on the agenda is other business. Does anybody have any other business they want to bring forward? Okay. So I want to ask the following question before, um, we talk about our next meeting tomorrow evening was set aside for deliberation. I was interested in asking the committee if they would like me to cancel that meeting tomorrow evening and we can go ahead and start our deliberations on, let's see, be uh, May 4, 6 p.m. How does the committee feel? I, for one, am ecstatic to have a Thursday night off. So you okay. have my vote to take a couple of days and catch a breath. How does everybody else feel? Are you okay with taking a break? I am. I think okay. it'll be. I think it'll give the time to actually deliver a little 
go over it even further before yeah. rushing to deliberation. Yeah, there's been a lot thrown at us. Um, and, you know, like I said the other day, I, I think better off screen. So I'd like a little time to digest this. Um, but I just want to make sure everybody is in full agreement. Um, Derek, is that okay with you? Yes, yeah, so we're fine. Thank you. Okay. Ginny, is that okay with you? Oh, it's fine. I'm happy to have a night off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So our next meeting is, uh, our meeting for tomorrow evening is canceled. And our next meeting will be May 4. That is a Wednesday at 6 p.m. And we will be, um, begin our budget deliberations and recommendations then. And we have a little bit of time before uh, this goes to full council. So uh, we can explore uh, <laughs> what we need to and think about things the way we need to. So I appreciate all of you very much for um, hanging in there and working through this budget. You guys are great. Um, there's a lot to digest, but thank you so much. You're a great, great committee. Council, um, yes, Mayor. Could I address the point that you're making right now and, sure. and the next meeting um, sure. before you go, I assume to adjourn, <laughs> but I <hope>. just, yeah. <laughs> um, I think you guys have done a great job. I know a couple of you on here are new to the process. So I wanna congratulate you on being very thoughtful and very thorough um, for in terms of every meeting that I've attended. I appreciate um, all the work that all of you have put into this. Beyond that, I simply want to say, since you, <laughs> since your chair has now given you a little bit of time, um, I'm going to put all my department heads out there on a limb. But if you have further questions, um, that might exclude you, Jenny. Uh, <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> I'm typing one to Liz right now as we speak. Yeah, Please don't thought. stop me. <laughs> Everybody but Jenny. No, I'm yeah. teasing you, Jenny. You know that. Uh, uh, by all means, you know, we'll try to make ourselves available as much as possible for the, to answer those questions if you have further questions. Between now and May 4th. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor, for that offer. We appreciate it very much. Thank yeah. you. Okay, I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> Jarvis, a second. Sure. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you don't want to leave, Mike? <laughs> okay, thank you. A uh, motion was made by uh, Councillor Jarvis, seconded by Councillor Taranzo. All in favor of adjournment? Aye. 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 Okay, any opposed or abstentions? Okay, the meeting ends at 7.45. Good night. Thank you Good all night, very everybody. much.